Good morning, Sava from Sava Talk Spurs here. Fresh after a night of watching YouTube channels, debating with people, and being called the most toxic Spurs fan on YouTube. Most toxic Spurs fan. We'll come back to that. I do find it funny. I think people think I sit here in a rocking chair with this miserable look on my face, crying all week. But um, what I wanted to talk about today was this. Where will Tottenham Hotspur finish next season? Now, this is a really, really interesting one because there's lots of schools of thought on this and there's loads of different opinions. So, of course, I'll give you mine. And, of course, I'm going to caveat my opinions because I feel that with this long to go in the window, I feel like you have to caveat. Plus, there's other factors that we need to throw in. But we'll speak about that later. So, here's the most toxic person on YouTube's opinion. Mr. Toxic says that we will finish fourth. I know, really toxic. Champions League football, toxic, toxic, toxic. I believe we'll finish fourth. And I'm going to caveat this and say these predictions are based on what is going on right now. This isn't, this isn't based on what happens if we sign X, Y, Z. This is based on right now. So here's my thoughts and my rationale behind finishing fourth. You know me, I don't like to just make a sweeping statement. I will back it up with facts and what I believe. So, first and foremost, why do I think we will finish fourth and not fifth? Let me start that way around. Well, as it stands at the moment, I still think that we are by far better than Man United and better than West Ham. Now, I think both of those are strengthening significantly. Let's start with Man United. Man United, for me, have got a very good coach now who I think will get them playing some lovely football. Have they done enough to enter that top four? Not for me, but I do think they're going to be a lot closer than they were last year. I think you're going to see a lot of players re, uh, you know, reignited at Man United. You're going to see good players that he's brought in. I think Ericsson's a fantastic signing for them. When you look now with Ericsson and Bruno Fernandes as their creative force, it means that if Bruno doesn't have a good game, it's not highlighted as much. So I think they're going to have a decent season. Now, can they get more business over the line between now and the end of the window? That's where the caveat comes in. And that's where this may change. If they go and get a player like Frankie De Jong, a centre-half, I might put them as my favourites for fourth. I don't know. We'll have to see who's bought. Now, when you look at West Ham, I think West Ham have done some fabulous business. We, we don't want to say it. We will mock them because we're football fans and we're tribalistic. But again, if I take my Spurs hat off, where do I think West Ham will finish? I think they'll be fifth or sixth. I think they'll go one better than last year. I think they've added a few good players. I don't know too much about the centre-half they've added, but from speaking to some people I know who watch, who watch a lot more football than me, I know, and I watch loads, they've said he's very good by all accounts. That with Ogbonna, with Zuma, I think they're solid at the back. If they get Kostic at left-back or left-wing-back, that for me is a no-brainer. He will add multiple assists and is an upgrade on Cresswell. He can also tuck inside and probably play the 10 role, but he, he normally plays left wing back. Now adding Skamaka as well, they've got a proper centre forward. Now, no disrespect to Antonio, but he was a converted forward. So it gives them options. So I think West Ham have done some brilliant business. So when I see posts like, who's won the transfer window? I think it's really silly because it's all relative to each club. And I think West Ham, if they get Kostic, they've got Skamaka, got the centre-half they got in, I think they're doing some very good business. Now, let's look at Arsenal. The reason I think we'll finish above Arsenal is I don't think they've got anything in central midfield. I think they'll score plenty of goals. When you look at the likes of Martinelli, when you look at Saka, Odegaard, Smith-Rowe and Gabriel Jesus, I think they will all score 10 plus between them. So they'll all get, I think, between them 50, 60 goals next season. So I don't think that's going to be as big an issue as people think it is. I'm not saying they don't need another forward, but I think there's a lot of goals there on rotation. Now, where I think Arsenal slightly lack is in that midfield area. I don't know if they've got a Basuma. I don't know if they've got a Kovacic. Well, I'm saying I don't know. They haven't. They've got Party, who, all issues aside, is a very good player but has not been able to find that kind of rhythm due to injury since he's been at Arsenal. 
I think if they get another midfielder in, if they get a Madison, if they get a Milenkovic, Savic or a Paqueta, players that they're linked with, then I think we start having another conversation. But at the moment, I think we've still got enough to finish above them. However, I'm not like a lot of Spurs fans. I'm not arrogant when I go, oh, we've left them well behind. I don't think we've left any of those three teams well behind. And here's why. Here's why I put Tottenham Hotspur in fourth and why I don't think we've left them all behind. This year is going to be different. Yes, from when Conte came in, we had a magnificent time with him coming in. But Conte was able to play the same 11 week in, week out. They all played his way. He trusted those 11 and we got over the line. Just, by the way, on the last day, we got over the line. And he worked wonders with what he picked up. Now, the difference is you're bringing in more players. You need time to players to gel. Same with every club, but we need time for players to gel. Second of all, we're going to be playing every weekend. Don't Please don't be anal about this. Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. We know it could be Sunday, Tuesday, whatever. All right? Against better opposition. We're not playing Wren. We're not playing Mura. We're not playing uh, Vitesse Arnhem. No disrespect to all those clubs because I think, I think all three of them beat us or two of them beat us. But you're now playing better opposition, which means it's about the rotation. Can Spurs rotate? Have we got enough to rotate? For me, before I'm called toxic, no, I don't think we have. I think we've got lots and lots of volume, not a lot of quality in reserve, if any quality in reserve. That's where I get called negative. Also because I don't rate uh, Emerson Royal, which is baffling. But never mind, we'll talk about something else. That's why I think Tottenham Hotspur will finish fourth. I don't think that's toxic. I don't think that's negative. I see it if we don't finish fourth. If we finish fifth, I won't turn around and go, he's failed. If we finish outside the top five, then I do think we have failed from where we were. But can we finish third? Now, I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility. Of course, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. Chelsea, we don't know what's going on there. They're having a torrid pre-season, but we've seen many times where clubs have had torrid pre-seasons. We've seen many times where teams have had brilliant pre-seasons and that doesn't translate once you start the season properly. So I think Chelsea will still be strong. I also think, and again, this is all caveated because again, I don't know. No, none of us know. I think between now and the end of the window, Chelsea will go and buy another three or four big players. They've still got, if you want to look at it, a back four of Chilwell, Koulibaly, Thiago Silva and Reese James, which is very strong. They can put enough, if they bring another centre-half in, which I'm sure they're going to, they'll go to that and that's a solid back five. You've now lost nothing in the midfield. Kovacic, Jorginho, Kante, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Conor Gallagher's gone in there now. So you've not lost anything there before people keep talking about, oh, they've lost all these players and there's no depth. Now, when you look to the forward line, they've added Raheem Sterling. Lukaku's gone, but wasn't a miss, didn't do a lot last year. This, for me, is where I think they will be vulnerable, but I think they're going to strengthen in the next couple of weeks to month. If Chelsea go and buy a proper forward, it doesn't have to be an out-and-out striker, because now a lot of teams aren't going down that route. But if Chelsea add more goals to what they've got with Sterling and Havertz and Mount, I still think they're better than us squad depth. I think they've got a lot more. Just look at the midfield options I just gave you there compared to our midfield options. They've also got some creativity, some spark. I don't think we have. Now, obviously, Chelsea are the team to chase down. Obviously, if we're going to get third, that's going to be the team that we overtake. But I think a lot of fans are writing off Chelsea far too early. I don't know how they're going to do this year. None of us know. Um, Koulibaly's a great signing. Sterling's a great signing. I think they're going to add three or four more. Um, we'll see. So there's my third or fourth. Will Tottenham catch Liverpool and City in second? Not for me. And I'm not being negative. But again, I'll come back to this. You need depth. To go that far in competitions, you need depth. And I, I just don't see it at Tottenham, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. I know a lot of people will tell me, oh, well, we've got Skip and Hoiberg and Lucas. And, and, and Royal and Sessignon and Davis and, and Sanchez and Rode, that's not depth for me. That's a lot of a lot of average footballers. 
For me, I'm talking about who comes on and changes the game. Which three or four players at the weekend can you swap in to give Kane and Romero a rest? I don't think there's a lot there. So I think we're going to have a good season. I think we will finish fourth. Be lovely to win a cup. I see fans saying we're definitely winning a cup, which I think, again, you know me, I won't ever say definite because there's still very good clubs about. Our fans seem to be talking like everyone else is awful now and we're amazing. And I think I, I err on the side of caution because I don't see enough has changed. Now, here's the caveat. If between the end of now and the end of the window, Spurs go and buy a Madison type, a top centre-back and another top right wing-back, all of a sudden, we've added more depth, more quality. That's when I might start changing my opinion and say, third should definitely be ours. However, in the same token, between now and the end of the window, United could go by three or four top players and we would be worried about fourth. Arsenal could, Chelsea could. So I think as a football fan, I like to try and look at everything. I don't just look and go, I'm Spurs, we're amazing. I look at the whole piece. Okay, so... um. Let, let me know your thoughts. For me, I'm sorry if anyone feels any of that is toxic. I don't believe I ever mean to set out to be toxic. My opinion is my opinion. It's not toxic. I've been wanting to be wrong for about 20 years. So far, I've not been drastically wrong on any of the main, main things. Some players, of course, I'm wrong about how well they do and how well they don't. Same as all of you. None of us are correct about every player. Yeah, We only point out when people are wrong. We never point out when people are right. So I'm going to leave you with these thoughts. Tottenham fourth for me. I think it's going to be City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs. Not saying we can't beat Chelsea. Please remember what we've just talked about. But I think it's going to be City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs, Man United, Arsenal, West Ham. Or Arsenal, West Ham. I'm not sure. I want to see to the end of the window. Let me know your thoughts. Can we get in those extra two or three players between now and the end of the window and make this a great window from a good window to a great window? Can we? I really want to see it. I know loads of you think I'm toxic. I, all I want is the best for Tottenham Hotspur. All I want is for Spurs to go out and be really positive. Yeah, not a 45 million net. I want to go and say we've chucked 150 million out of this window. That's what I want to see. Can we do it? I don't know. Leave, leave me your thoughts. I'll speak to you in the chat and I'll be live tonight with Henry, Spurs show at five. And then we've got the um, Savon Wright live tonight. And we'll be looking at Barcelona against Madrid for the chat for the La Liga title. We'll be looking at can Roma cause an upset in the Serie A. And we'll also be looking at is it beyond possibility for anyone to ever catch Bayern Munich and PSG? Let me know your thoughts. Much love. See you later. Bye-bye.